what we're gonna be diving into today when it comes to LinkedIn are four different components. Number one is, how do you make sure that your LinkedIn profile is set so people are attracted to what you're saying and that does lead into meetings? Number two is we're gonna tell you how to connect with your potential buyers so that they want to talk to you and they don't decline your connection requests. Number three is we're gonna talk about how to leverage Sales Navigator to find clues, what I like to call them, so that you can have better messaging. And number four leads right into that. How do you have better messaging that leads into meetings? So before we tell you the tactics on how to get meetings, I know that's where everybody wants to go, I need to break down how you need to set up your LinkedIn profile. Now, where most people go wrong when it comes to their profile is they just put SDR, AE, or sales rep. I'm going to tell you all right now, nobody's coming to the profile being like, oh, wow, you're a sales rep? Let me, let me connect with you. Let me talk to you. That typically is not happening. So the first thing that we need to do, and that I have done as well, is I look at my headline to see, am I speaking to my potential buyer? If you are not speaking to your potential buyer, then the likelihood of them coming on your profile is going to be very low. So what exactly do we want to do here? We want to look at our headline and have a framework that I've seen to be very successful to increase profile views. And I even had one person that I've coached and they've said, hey, look, I did this headline tweak and it led to 300% increase in profile views. Now, I'm not going to say that's, that's going to happen for every single person. However, that did happen. And let's follow this framework. So when you're looking at your headline, the very first thing that you want to do is make sure that it speaks to your potential client. So that would be a pain point that you solve. That could be a goal that you help them accomplish, whatever that may be. And an example of that might be, hey, we help you make your cold call conversions easier, or we turn your data into real-time data that helps you convert opportunities. I'm giving you examples on what you can do. Everyone's gonna be different, but you wanna make sure that you speak to pain points, goals, priorities for your potential buyer, so it makes sure it speaks directly to their language and it's something they want to dive into. Another thing that you can do on this headline is a call to action. Now, we have some clients that they'll have a call to action and say, hey, DM me if you wanna learn more about cold calling, data, IT, right? So they get those DMs. Or you could even say, hey, check out my featured section where we have case studies. These are different things that you can point to. I'm not saying there's not a right or wrong answer here. A-B test to see where you get the most interaction and where you get the most engagement. Now that you have your headline in order and we've, we have something a little bit more captivating and established, we're gonna move to the bio. Now, this is not where you need to write a autobiography here, all right? You could look at mine and realize mine's pretty long, but the what I'm trying to do is a little bit different. What I want you all to do from a sales rep and sales leader perspective is to just do two different frameworks. The first framework is what I do. So you're just gonna put in what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis and what type of buyer personas you speak to. When you post on LinkedIn, you wanna talk about what audiences and people you like to get in front of. You also want to speak to who are you speaking to on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Who are those buyer personas? Who are those people? So that's what you're going to do there. The other thing that you want to put is your core values for success. I typically tell people to have three to five bullet points on what their core values are. So when other people come see their profile, it aligns with maybe what their core values of success are. And now you can have a better conversation. Now that we have your bio sorted, let's go to the last part, which is the experience. Now, Within the experience, there's a section called media. And what we wanna do is add three to four media pieces that are going to draw in your dream client. And so what do those look like? These would be case studies, testimonials, blogs, things that have proof of concept of your work and how people enjoy working with you. This is going to be something that's absolutely critical and will change the game for you because you wanna have something there so people have something to refer to. So now that we have your LinkedIn profile in order, let's go to the next portion of this section, which is how do we get people to connect with us? We have a great profile picture. We got our headline in order. Our bio looks great. But how do we get people to accept our connection requests? So there are three different frameworks that I recommend to people when we do this to get higher acceptance rates. Now, I'm going to give you this tip first, right? This is the, this is the most important part of what I'm going to tell you which is the blank connection request. Now, some of you may be like, wait, a blank connection request? I thought I was supposed to personalize. Wait, what's going on here? We ran multiple A-B tests with clients across the world and in different regions. 100 connection requests. 50 would be personalized. 
50 are this blank connection request, which essentially is a connection request that doesn't have anything inside of it. You just send the request. We have found that the blank connection request has a higher acceptance rate over anything else. So the more acceptance rate we can get, the easier communication and messaging will be moving forward, which we'll talk about towards the end of this masterclass episode, how do you convert those opportunities? But before we get to the opportunities, you gotta get some connections. So the very first thing I recommend to people to do is send the blank connection request because you're gonna see higher acceptance rates. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called direct ask. So it may seem something like this. Hi, Sally. The reason that I want to connect with you is we've been talking to sales leaders about our cold calling frameworks that have led to high conversions. If you were willing to accept this connection request, I would want to ask you about that. Now, you notice that in this direct note, I'm telling this person, if you connect with me, I'm most likely going to pitch you. And this works really well what we've seen with people that are executives, obviously they don't have a lot of time on their hands. And by telling them exactly why you're connecting, your meeting to conversion rate will be higher. Your connection rate may be lower, however, your meeting rate will be higher because these people know that some type of pitch or message is about to happen, which is the critical component of what we're doing here, which is doing it the right way so we can convert appropriately. Now, the third point that I'm going to get into is called give on content. And so when you do this connection request, you're going to say, hi, let's just say it's Sally. We've been speaking to a lot of sales leaders and they have been loving our new series on cold calling. Would you be open to seeing that webinar? So this is where you're gonna give them a piece of content so they can engage, send it to their team, whatever it may be. And now it gives you a reason to follow up with them to say, how did you like the webinar? How did you like the ebook? Whatever you decide is up to you, but this is a good way to start conversations by leading with some type of value, not like random value, like this is real value, and now you can follow up appropriately. So now that we have the three different dynamics of how you can send a connection request, this is the most critical piece at the end of this, because now that you have the connection request, they may not accept you. I, I did not say there's a silver bullet. Sometimes they may not accept you at all. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on your connections, in the top right, you'll see see all, and then you'll see something called sent. These are all the connection requests that you sent in entirety. And if you have never done this before, you probably have a lot of connection requests that you need to withdraw. And I, and I learned this like maybe a year or two in my sales role, and I wish I would have known this earlier. So you can withdraw all your connection requests and send them again in two to three weeks. And so that way, if one of these don't work, you can use it in the next two to three weeks. The goal is, is to A-B test to see what works for you. Like I said, the blank connection request, that has worked wonders for people we've spoken to, but that's not to say that the other two might end up being a higher result for you based on your industry, persona, or region that you're in. So make sure that you're using one of these frameworks to connect with people, because then once we're connected, we then can engage with them appropriately. Now we're gonna dive into the third part of this masterclass, which is Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator is one of my favorite tools that is out there, and you're gonna learn a lot as I break this down. And this could be honestly a two hour conversation, but we don't have time for that. So I'm just gonna give you what's the most important, and then you can go execute on that. So once you have started to connect with people, we want to be able to message them to get meetings. However, you need to have context and you need to have clues in order to reach out to these people. Otherwise, they're not gonna to respond to you. You don't wanna be another person that just slides in the DMs and you just pitch slap them and they disconnect with you and they don't wanna to talk to you and you're like on the hall of shame as a seller. We don't want these things. So we wanna make sure that we have the right contextual clues so we can reach out to these people and get the responses that we want. So the very first thing that you wanna do when you get into Sales Navigator is go look at lead filters. Now there are five filters that every single person listening in should write down. And if you're a sales leader listening in today, you should have your teams do this as well. So the first filter I like is past company. Now, why do I like past company? Because if you are an organization that has X amount of customers, there are people that are gonna work at this company and then they're gonna go somewhere else. However, they had a great user experience. We wanna follow them along to their next journey. So in past company, I'll put in a company that I had a lot of experience with and then see where they go moving forward. An example of that is, I have worked very closely with a lot of big brands. And so I'll put that brand in there, right? If they have a, over a thousand employees plus, and even if you have someone hundred to 500, it's still fine to do this. And I put them in past company. I then look at 
what are all the people that used to work there that are now at new companies that I can go reach out to to schedule meetings because they're already familiar with our services, like I said. And so that's a great way to stand out and the number one filter you should look at. Number two that we're going to look at is the seniority title. So you obviously want to be able to go after directors, VPs, and CISOs. I like to put that in there so it's easier for me to filter and distinguish who I'm going after. The third one is the connections. So I always like to look at the first degree connections. So those are easy ways for me to reach out and see who in my network can I tap into. You can also distinguish it by second degree connections as you're prospecting as well. But again, we want that first degree so we can send the messages, which we're about to explain what that means. Now, with the connections, the fourth one is leads that have viewed your profile. So LinkedIn is the only social site that allows you to see who's viewed your profile. That is a huge intent signal that we should probably reach out to this person. And so what I do is I look at the first degree connections, I look at who's, who's viewed my profile, and I send them a message to engage with them. And again, we'll explain what that messaging looks like in the fourth section, but when you do that, it allows for them to spark that interest even more. They looked at your profile, there's clearly something there. Let's dive into it to figure out what's going on. So that's the piece that we can then clarify and understand so that we're having a better conversation with our potential buyers on their terms because they came to our profile. Now, the fifth one, when we look at all the different filters, this is one that can absolutely stand out, which is the people or the leads that follow your company. When people follow your company, this is already a huge intent signal that you should be looking to get after them because they followed you. So with all that being said, you now have people that follow your company, people that have viewed your profile. You can use the connections and the seniority in past companies. You're now setting yourself up for success. Now, there are other filters if you want to use them. You absolutely can. Obviously, the current company, the geography, those are things that are going to be important, especially if you're in territories. And obviously, that's a case-by-case -case basis. But if you use the five I just described to you, that can set you up to now find the clues of what you're looking for. The next search function outside of the five that I just mentioned is change jobs. Why this is important because it allows you to see all the people within your first and second degree network who have changed their jobs. The reason that we want to reach out to these people is because typically people that come into a new job, they're looking to have an impact, do something different. So that's why we want to tap into them. And so the best way to do that is save the search, click the change jobs button, and then every week you'll be updated. Under, so under the, res, the main results, there'll be a green outlier there. And it's gonna say 100 new results, 200 new results. You can click that and you'll see all the people within the last week or the last month that have changed their jobs inside of Sales Navigator. So when you're looking at another way to break into accounts or do something different, that's an excellent strategy to leverage. This is the very last thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to Sales Navigator. And this search function is gonna allow you to engage with executives that typically don't have a lot of comments. It's called people have posted on LinkedIn. And so why this is important is because most of the time when a senior leader, go to market leader, anyone you're looking to get in front of post, they have either one, two, sometimes even zero comments. So as a salesperson, if you come in there with a very thoughtful comment and you tag them, the likelihood of them responding to your messages, whether it's email or LinkedIn, or we're talking about right now, or cold calling, is going to be way higher. So create that list of people, do that save search function I mentioned earlier with the change jobs, and keep tabs on everyone who's posting. Comment, engage, get in front of them. This is how you're going to stand out in a sea of noise and how you're going to be a pattern interrupt by leaving thoughtful comments. Please don't leave comments that are like, great post. Make it at least two to three sentences so people will see, oh, wow, this is a different type of rep. I want to engage with them. So now that we have our profile all sorted and ready to go, we now have our connections that are getting sent out. We're getting accepted there or we're withdrawing and resending. Now that we have Sales Navigator best practices here, we're now going to go into how do we schedule meetings and do LinkedIn the right way. So there are three different ways on how you can message someone on LinkedIn to get a meeting. The first thing is questions that spark conversations. So when you're thinking about LinkedIn, it's about sparking conversations that convert. And so a way that you can do that is ask persona-based questions 
to your potential buyer. So an example of that might be if I'm looking to go in front of and talk to a VP of sales, I might ask, hi, Sally, looks like you're hiring a ton of sales reps right now. How exactly are you preparing them for their cold calls? That's just a baseline example of a question, but you get where I'm coming from. You should have go-to questions based on your persona that you can ask people to start the conversation. Now, obviously, as we ask this question, we're gonna get answers that allow us to get into dialogue and start the conversation, but we wanna be very mindful as we have these conversations that this can lead into something. But again, we're just trying to start dialogue where people go straight into the pitch. We're actually going straight into the conversation. And again, that stands out differently than everybody else. The second thing is a voice note. Now, when you do a voice note, we base this on a framework that we like to call the 10, 30, 10. So I'll say that one more time so everybody understands where we're going here. The 10, 30, 10. So the first 10 seconds is the reason for the voice note. Why are you doing this in the first place? Typically, you can find a clue or an insight you can gather from there. And that first 10 seconds is going to be the reason why you are reaching out. If you do not have a reason on why you're reaching out, I'd recommend you not to reach out. That's why it's important to use that sales navigator insight I mentioned earlier, because this will make your messaging even stronger. The 30 seconds is your value prop. Now, this is the easier part because you're just gonna take your calls, your emails, and what you're already putting in your value prop, and you're gonna insert it into this voice note. You're just saying it out loud. The last 10 seconds of this voice note is your call to action. And here are a couple options that you can have here. Number one would be, would you be open to a deeper dialogue on this topic? And the second one is, would you be interested in having a conversation on this? So again, that sparks interest. So they can either say, oh yeah, I'm interested or not. And you're not directly asking for time. Again, it sparks interest there. That's what we've seen to be successful for the people that we've coached and also the people that we've trained. And so that 10, 30, 10, really look at it as a movie trailer. When you look at a movie trailer, the whole goal is for you to spark, spark interest, so you wanna go see the movie. So if we focus on that movie trailer component, it allows us and allows the buyer to be like, okay, yeah, I, I actually might be interested in a call. I wanna know a little bit more, but we're not giving the full information because we're not there yet. We're not ready for that. That's why we do this as a movie trailer format. And when you do your voice notes on LinkedIn, you wanna do it on the mobile device. It's the only place that you can do it. And you have to be first degree connected. But again, this stands out because this is something that you can automate. Last thing that I'll mention is when you send this voice note, you wanna make sure that you follow up two days after the voice note. And you wanna say something like, hi, Sally, any feedback on my voice note? The reason that you wanna ask for feedback is because feedback can be positive, neutral, or negative. If it's positive, they're like, oh, I listened to it. I wanna meet with you, great. Neutral's like, I'm not really sure about this yet. I didn't listen to it, but I will. And the negative is like, they did listen to it and they're just not interested. All these can be completely fine. This happens throughout the process where you'll get yeses and nos, but the feedback allows you to get a higher response rate once you've done that voice note. So make sure to incorporate that follow-up so you don't lose out on those pieces. Then as we look at this as a whole, the last one that I wanna talk about is the video. Now video is the same exact thing. You follow the 103010, so I'm not gonna repeat that, but you wanna make sure that you do these following things so you can convert with your video messaging. Number one is make sure that you look approachable. All right, so most people end up messing this up because of the way that they do their video. It can be in the dark, they don't have a smile. Make sure that you have a smile. Make sure, again, you look approachable. You're in a well-lit area. That's how people are gonna receive this information and be willing to click that video. What I also tell people as well is when you do a video, three retakes at maximum. If you go over three retakes, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get in your head and you're gonna overthink it. I've done this multitude of different times. I will do so many different takes or I have done so many different takes and what ended up happening is that like, I ended up doing way too many videos and they ended up being way too long instead of just doing like, hey look, here's what it is, here's where it's at. If I make a mistake, I'm human, it's fine. They'll be okay with it. Another thing that I recommend people to do is have this as a consistent framework that you execute on. Five videos a day, not that hard. Two videos a day. Get in a rhythm of doing it so you start to feel more confident and comfortable. This is what I did when I was a sales rep and even when I, when I was working full sales cycle rep at JB Sales, I would just focus on, can I do five videos a day, right? Can I do 15 videos a week? Keep yourself in rhythm, 
It allows for your voice to get better, allows for your confidence to get better, and the people on the other side of the video can absolutely feel that. Those are ways that you can engage with people on LinkedIn the right way, being intentional so people truly understand where you're coming from and they want to connect with you. Important note to add here, once someone has responded to you and you are getting a meeting, which will happen, and it's an exciting time, make sure that you have your Cali extension ready to go. And I, and I absolutely love this feature because we do not like going back and forth to figure out time. So all you have to do is inside the LinkedIn message with the Calendly Chrome extension on LinkedIn, you just click it and it will have different meeting links that you can send. So I have a 30 minute one, a 45 minute one, depending on what the conversation is, I can put it in there and say, hey, schedule time. And that allows for you to now schedule meetings faster and it removes the friction of going back and forth like I was just talking about. And then as we dive into this, making sure that the, any feedback that I mentioned earlier, you can use this in different messaging. You can use this in your emails. You can use this in other functions of when you're reaching out as well. So we're gonna talk about how that incorporates in, in the section two, right? Or actually part two of the series. We're gonna talk about that more. But as we wrap up how to do this right on LinkedIn, uh, we will now hop into the Q&A and we'll answer your questions.